Hello everybody and welcome to game number two of Suppy vs. Daishi. Suppy took game number one of the Roach Bane All-In Multi-Phase Edition. And in the top left, we do have the victor from the previous game representing Team EG and also the CSL and everything it stands for. All that's good in the world. His name is Suppy. And in the bottom left, we have our Yellow Terran player representing the French Team Millennium. Did follow the All-In last game, playing really greedily, but let's see if he does it again or not. It is Rollwind, so who knows? His name is Daishi. Yeah, this is a this is another very good map to be able to go go very greedy on. It's a long walk distance, especially if you're cross spawns, which they're not this game. The vertical spawns will help whichever player wants to be aggressive a little bit, but it's still a very good map to go to aggressive. You see many, many CC first on this map. Yep, and it's uh, kind of good to point out that Daishi is kind of on the, not the best side you want to be on. Normally, if the positions are a bit swapped, the Zerg, Zerg Natural is a bit more exposed to drops and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but... Well, not today. In this case, it's actually the Terran who finds himself a bit on the back foot as far as the base locations uh, go. Yep. So if, Mut if Mutalists come to the fray, they can get in a lot easier and stuff like that. But yeah. The nice thing about the way Daishi is positioned, though, is his main base will be pretty well defended against Mutalists just due to the fact they have to fly through the natural to get there. So mm -hmm. this, yeah, the positioning and the positioning of your spawns on this map really can depend on where you're going to get dropped or where you're going to get attacked by air units, but it can never stop you from getting attacked by air units. Because at one point, you're going you're gonna to get attacked, especially on Whirlwind. It's just yep. so easy. Yeah, those those big mobile units that are either, so in this case, Mutalist for Zerg or Speed Medivacs for Terran, much more useful on giant maps like this. Their oh, use yeah. is, their, I mean, their efficiency is expounded by the size of the map as well. So we will see a hatch first from Suppy, no surprise there. And looks like we're having gas a bit earlier this time from Daishi. So reacting already just a bit to what we saw from uh, Suppy in the previous game. Yeah, this is a really cool gas timing to go for the 15 gas. You can still get your expand right after barracks and all that kind of stuff, but then after your expand's done, you're, you're ready to be able to throw it on a factory, then you can start working on your reactor and your barracks. So I'm a big fan of this, the the kind of 15 gas. Because if you see it, he'll build, he'll build an orbital like he's building, and then he'll the money will kind of pool up, he'll throw it on a CC, and then he can start going into his tech instead of getting the CC slightly earlier and then start working into his gas. So I'm a fan of this. It's kind of a middle ground between 13 gas and between not getting gas at all. So... I'm a fan. Now we see a thrilling battle of Marine versus Overlord. And, I think uh, Overlord probably wins by Overlord, running away. I think Overlord will get away this time. Maybe. Uh, I think Ooh, this might actually be pretty close. close. If somebody loses Overlord, that's such a... I mean, it may not be as big of a loss as it as it is like a mental hit, where you're just like, God, I'm playing in this big turn. I'm playing in Dreamhack. Oh, I flew, oh, I flew all the way out to Sweden, and I lose my second Overlord. Like, come on. That's, that's just that's, such a bummer. That really, really does suck. That sets him back, actually, quite a fair bit, actually. That was the last damage the Marine could have done, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so, so too. And what this does, this makes Daishi feel very safe in expanding as well, because, I mean, Subby has to make more Overlords in this game, stage of the game. Larva is very important. One less Larva is a couple less links to attack, so... Probably not a whole lot going to come very effectively on the aggressive front from Suppy. So Daishi probably feels pretty good about himself, even getting a full scout off with the uh, with the SCB. So he should feel pretty strong so far going into this game. And this is actually prompting oh, Daishi to pull out these, with well. these Marines. Yep, he's going to catch another Overlord here. As long as he does, as long as he has pretty good star step micro here, and there yep, there isn't any lings out or no queens or anything because the fact that he couldn't build a Mizuho supply block before. So now he's going to get this other Overlord killed. Daishi doing a really good job just knowing the Overlord scouting patterns. He's on most map there. They're pretty well documented where every Overlord's going to go, so he's like, alright, I killed the first one, I know I have a little bit of map control, so I'm going to go kill the second one, too. Yeah, and this this is just sending Suppy back, just, it's it's not a, the worst thing in the world, but it's against someone like Daishi, who looks like he's going for drops of some kind. This is a lot less to prepare for a drop, especially if it's coming as fast as this one looks like it is. And yep. uh, I think, I'm guessing it's going to be, yeah, going to be Widow Mines, so, because no armory on the way quite yet, but the Starport is on the way, so Widow Mine drops forthcoming here, and well, this slow start, it's going to be... We're going to see how hard this is for Suppy to deal with. It should be a massive pain in the ass, at the very least. Yeah, this will be very difficult for him to deal with. I mean, he's going to have... His queens are going to be just finishing right around now. He'll have, Well, his, his his third and fourth queens will be finishing right around now. So, have a good way to be able to DPS that stuff down. But he won't have... He won't have a lair off for any overseers. He he probably won't have any spore crawlers built yet. I mean, he doesn't need an evo chamber to build them anymore. So, that's nice. But it's just going to be very difficult for him to deal with these these widow mine drops just because he was put so far behind by those couple overlords they just they put him into a position where he, he got behind and he he kind of had to pick what he wanted to do. does he want army or does he want economy he kept on going for economy so he'll be a little bit behind on his army and that'll make it harder for him to be able to deal with these widow mines so especially because he's not going to scout them at all he doesn't have any overlords to see it and the two lings going through the middle of the map just actually just missed the force of Daishi. he was running just right towards the front at the moment and Gonna pick up a creep tumor, maybe it looks like. Yep, we'll get one. And just moving to the widow mines, and right now it's just queens to defend this. Gonna burn those widow mines. Oh, ho, ho. he's gonna. One does go down. That's actually a pretty big deal, but gonna do a fair bit of damage to these queens with that. 
It's just so interesting that he's just doing a little run by with this. I mean, he's not bringing any medevacs at all here. He's gonna be able to get two queens, maybe. Nope. Just two marine shots away from that other queen dying. So that's it's a little bit of a bummer that he lost that widow mine as it was burrowing. So mm -hmm. I think a drop would have been a little bit more effective. But now he is moving out with a with a widow mine drop and a marine. Widow mines and marine drops. So that was kind of just the first wave of his aggression. Yeah. And here does come that drop. Marines being dropped down first. Widow mines will make their way into the into the middle line and will burrow. And that's. Well, that's no mining for you, and that's a bunch of lings going down for a nice little first shot there. Not on the workers, but that's okay. And, uh, yeah, so that little mine's going to stay in the that mineral line, and probably going to go try and drop another one. But there is a spore car already in place in the natural mineral line, so won't be as big of a deal. But going to try and burrow out of range of it, and I think that's out of range? About 100% actually. But nope, right. probably, well, Daisy doesn't like that position, so he's going to move it anyway. If I really like the fact that, uh, that Daisy picked up that little mine before it got off his shot, it kept it off cooldown and made it so he would have lost he would have lost his one marine like right there with, with the splash damage before so so it's a little bit of a bummer that he lost his meta back and that this widow mine drop didn't do more damage but daishi is still in a pretty good spot if yeah, we don't have a viking out picking off overloads across the map and just daishi doing all the little things right now widow mines what are you doing those widow mines kind of just walked across the map i'm not really i'm not sure how they got all the way up in there so easy but they did not burrow and as you said the viking is picking off some overloads just got one this, kill here this pack links needs to be careful Okay. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. If, if they just hang out by that window mine, it's pretty easy for them just all to get killed off right away. This this Viking looks like it might get its second Overlord kill. Yeah, it's going to get a second one here. I just hope that he realizes that this Queen is attacking and he doesn't just lose the Viking to the Queen. That'd be a little bit of a bummer. I'm going to try DPS that Overlord down first. He's playing this very close if he's... Well, he doesn't have the Viking selected and he's just going to lose it. That kind of does suck. Yeah. Almost gets the Overlord, but not quite. Would have been nice to have that Viking be basically all over the map. There's definitely more Overlords moving out. And they do have Overlord speed now, which is a bit of a reaction Suppy has uh, had to this, which is, I think, the right choice, being that how how, how much his Overlords have been hurt already this game. It's a bit sad, so I don't want to see that happen again. Yep, and there is a Cloak Banshee moving out. It's still going to be mostly a Biotype play, but he has a really cool really cool Tech Lab Starport. It's the kind of thing you don't you don't see very often in, a, in TVZ anymore. Most people want to go up to that reactor. They want to get double... Double medevacs or double Vikings, if if say there's like broodlers coming out or whatever, but you don't see tech labs very often. You don't see a lot of medevacs or raven or a lot of uh banshees or ravens, which is really cool. Ravens help you clean up the creep a lot and save you a lot of money on scans. Yep, and yeah, so it's we'll see him start doing that pretty shortly here. Yep, and basically the creeps, creep, the creep spread is already actually pretty decent considering uh yeah it is the pressure that uh, Sophie's actually been under, but already has an out almost uh, almost to mid map. Um, so that's a nice little start for him, but. Daishi continuing to build up his forces, uh, starting to add some ravens as well, or just at least one. So he's going to do the raven banshee thing, so he's going to get clearing creep that way, and that's going to be really, really no way to deal with that, because queens are all... Suffy really has to deal with that. Um, it looks like Suffy might be going for Roach Baneling again. Yeah, but it does look like that. He's. I don't think this is going to be as much of an all-in. It's just. It's quite a bit later. He has his third base, Saturated, and stuff like that, but he will be going, f going for, that for his main unit composition, at least for this, this main attack. But I'd like to see this banshee and raven kind of do a little bit more of a... A little bit more of a creep clearing up hit squad because they can do such a good job just having those two fly around. You can kill off almost all the creep tumors so easily, but I also love the fact that he's going for some queen snipes here. Banshees just have so much utility in TVZ. You, we need to see more of them, I think. You only really sure. need one to be a massive annoyance. So oh, yeah. Quite honest. Um, and well, now with this, the all spread ah, provides a bit of a scout as well because Daishi has a, some understanding of how many roaches are out in the map now. Uh, now they've seen a couple of them spawn, so should know that something is coming just based on that and. Well, this time, Daishi's a bit more prepared. He's got Widow Mines at, pretty much at anywhere he kind of needs them, at every location, at every mm -hmm. base. Um, so, should be able to defend pretty adequately here, I think. Yeah, he's got a lot of Widow Mines kind of all over the place. Overall, he has he has 11 Widow Mines out, and they're all they're all placed in very cool strategic positions. So, it's, it'll be tough for Suppy to really move anywhere without Daishi knowing. And you never know when that one Widow Mine shot's going to be the big one that gets 25, 30 lings all in one shot, so... I like that, having your Widow Mines really spread out instead of just all with your army. Yep, and let's see what else is going on. We have Bailing Speed on the way. We likely won't see uh, Suppy attack until that's done. Let's continue to build up his Roach count as well, but we do see Daishi actually moving out across the map with a fair number of Lings, and if he's not careful with these guys once Bailing Speed finishes, he could be in a very tough situation. All right, there doesn't seem to actually be, be a huge amount of Lings out on the map right now. There's only two, so this Bailing Speed is an interesting choice. I mean, he's building 20 more Zerglings, so those will probably mostly become Banelings, but it's... It's mostly roaches here, and Suppy is not that far ahead in supply for being for being all roach supply here. And this is gonna be tough for him to gauge all engage all these all these stim combat shield one one marines unless he and splits it up like this. Well, here comes the fight, and well, these roaches just aren't standing up to the marines as well as they should, and they're actually just getting massacred and catching roaches out in uh, little brief portions of uh, of roach. And well, marines will get cleaned up now for the most part. And, uh, 
try to figure yeah, out what all a, actually happened. But. Yeah, that was a really strange battle because both both of them kind of had a lot of different situations where their units weren't completely together. Like it wasn't both of their their full armies fighting all all at one time. It was kind of segmented out. And I think Daishi got the worst of the trade there. We see kind of his half of his army fighting all of Suppy's army right at the end. So that wasn't. That wasn't very good, and now somebody's going to try to push that advantage of these roaches, but I don't think that's a good choice with all the Widow Mines that there are all over the, all over the place. Yep, you try and suck it up with uh, individual roaches at a time, and here come the rest of the roaches moving on in. But there's a Bucker in the way as well, and this Banshee will be continuously doing some DPS, but Marines kind of rallying in the middle of death. Uh, that's not exactly great. The wall is down if uh, somebody wants to run right on by it, but nope, going to focus on staying outside and trying to deal with the army as well. And well, the thing is, both these players are on three bases, and in the long term, that leads to a pretty decent advantage for Terran. And oh yeah, yeah, Subby's really kind of, kind of all in on this, but he doesn't have really the banelings that you need to do that instant damage that you need to actually deal with a Terran in this situation. Yeah, with Terran with this many Marines out, this this many men of X, you really do need that splash damage to be able to kill it off. Say it's Ultralist, say it's banelings, or even, I guess you could try to go to like Swarm Host and get like the kind of thing that can whittle them down. But you need, you need something that can do a lot of damage to him. Just roaches just don't really do it because. I mean, roaches are sturdy. They can they can last for a long time, but they just they just don't do enough of that burst damage able to burst down this whole Terran army. Yeah, you're, it's one thing you, want, you basically want to clean out all the units with banelings, move in, clean up what's left of the roaches, and then that gives you basically actually time to I just, I, I, hold that thought. This battle going on in the middle, and well, these banelings are to hit, impact pretty damn well on Daishi, but these roaches trying to power on through, doing some damage to these marines, continuing to file in hellbats and marines as well. And I'm actually going to try and pick up with the cannon, run away, it looks like, and it looks like they will. Bottle Roach is still left here, but Daishi still has a decently high supply. I'm trying to figure out where it all is right now. There's a lot of them in the Widow, widow Mine just kind of scattered all over the place. And let's see what, how this explosion goes for the Widow Mine. Boom. Nice little shot there, but not quite enough to take that out. And this sur base is going to have to be lifted up here in a second, I think. Yeah, so he's going to kill off a lot of SCVs here, a lot of mules. There's going to be a really good pickup for him because... Daishi's kind of trying to sandwich his army, but he just, Daishi just doesn't have very many units out here. He's kind of, he lost a lot of Marines, those Baneling connections in the middle of the map, and I'm not really sure. He just doesn't have a very, very big supply here, but I think he will slowly be able to clean up all these roaches. This, this Banshee's being a lifesaver here, up to 21 kills already, just sitting here constantly DPSing up at, up on top of the roaches. And some Banelings engaging not too effectively here, go, um, um, ah, impacting only like single Marines at a time, and that was a... Pretty significant portion of Suppy's reinforcements, he's now down below the supply of Daishi, who has pretty much stayed a constant supply despite all of these battles so far. Yeah, but it was really nice for Daishi to have 2-2 during those battles. Or, oh, does he have 2-2? Yeah, he has 2-2 during those battles. Suppy did not have that. He only had 1-1 one, one on his roaches, or he only had 1-1 one, one on his lings and not even one attack on his roaches. So that that really did hurt him. That, that upgrade deficit really helped Daishi kind of carve out a carve out an advantage in this game, which is really going to help him out, especially with 3-3 three, three attack on the way. The moment he gets up to 3-3 three, three bio, this is really going to be an issue for Suppy if he doesn't have any splash damage out. Yeah, certainly, and Suppy going to try and take a fourth base, but will be quickly sniffed out, it looks like, by Daishi. Oh, not quite. He was pretty close to it, but second to pass on that. Trying to take a fourth of his own in the clear out that Overlord, and will take quite some time for that creep to back up. But when that does pass, he will take it very shortly, and here come the roaches mainlings moving back towards the middle of the map. Daishi kind of caught a bit in No Man's Land, and some reinforcements, uh, well, giant SV train actually making its way through as well. But, also, Subby can get a bit of a sandwich, in a bit of a sandwich here, and here comes the stim in, and the bio, trying to do what it can. Raven, what's it gonna do? I don't really know yet. It can fire Hunter Seeker Missile, I guess, but, um, that's about all it can really do. But the bio just chasing these roaches away, and there's not a whole lot Subby can do against this bio force, which is just more cost effective and supply effective than these roaches. Yeah, one secret uh, missile is thrown out, but that fizzles out. You know, Roach is just a little bit too fast, especially with Roach speed on creep. They can run away from that secret missile. Now, 31 Banelings being morphed. It looks like Suppy's going to go for a pretty big battle here, and this is all really going to depend on the control from both of them, because if, if Suppy can get those really big hits off on all of Daishi's Marines, these these uh, these Roaches should be able to come and clean it in pretty easy, but if Daishi can have some really good splits, this should be a completely different story. And Bubba can start splitting already here, and here he goes. Actually, standing in and running towards is the bio. He needs to be careful, and a lot, Marauder is tanking a lot of those uh, Banelings, hits, actually. And Well, there's, there's, I think there's, I, well, more Banelings actually continue to roll in, but I think there's too much left for Daishi here. And, yep. Yeah, yeah just a couple too many Marines. Yep, this Banshee's still plucking away overhead. 27 kills of anybody. Anybody doubted me saying that Banshees are still useful in the TBZ match. This one's killed probably 27 Roaches here, so... That's really helping him out. Daishi's just doing a really good job tra continuing to trade cost, of cost effectively against these roaches. I mean, look at the units lost tap. It's 15,000 and nearly 20,000, which, I mean, a 5,000 lead for Daishi helps so much when he's been even on bases most of the game. Is but some things make throw this fourth base, yeah. Yeah, 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 you say it, not me. Yeah, that orbital command almost actually going down there to some lanes and not lifting up, so that was a bit of a strange decision there. Gonna have to pull all those uh, workers back to go 
get to work again. And, well, Suppy's just, once again, he's just kind of stuck on roaches because he really can't afford to make much else. Otherwise, he'll just get rolled over by Daishi, who's about to finish that plus three attack. Once that's up as well, that's going to be a have a huge impact. And, I mean, the pressure for Daishi, just the production tabs kind of tell the story here. I mean, there's a lot more going on for Daishi. They really right do. Now. I mean, Suppy may be up on bases or even on bases, but that just really isn't enough for Zerk. He's probably already... He's probably already mined out yep, out of his main and his natural, where Daishi has a little bit left in his natural, his third base is still going well, so it's just just really showing that Subby's just not in the greatest economic position here. He just can't produce the units that he wants to and tech up at the, at the same time, which is really what he needs to do. He needs something to be able to deal with this ever-increasingly powerful bio-army. Yep. And, well, it's uh, a lot of the army... I'm trying to figure out where all of Daishi's stuff is right now. They're kind of uh, split up, but we're going to see some drops, maybe? I'm trying to figure out what this little group of uh, units is for up here. Yeah, it's just really weird that he has all of his medevacs, his raven and his banshee, up here with some hellbats. I mean, he would not be able to engage Suppy's main army with this, and I don't think he's going to be able to snipe off the fourth base either. So this is really strange choice from Daishi. He seems to do a lot of kind of these these weird army movement choices. He does not play... He's not playing the most standard, for sure. Everything looks a little a little different from him. No, certainly, but now we're starting to see the army group up a bit more here, and this is this is a lot of Hellbats, and it's Bailey's, really Bailey's it's... have a hard time cleaning through this as well as they would like, and, well, here comes the big attack once again. Bailey's rolling in, uh, detonating on mostly Hellbats and Marauders, it looks like, and still, well, Suppy still has a fair amount of Roaches left. Some SCVs coming in from Daishi to help out as well, and, well, the bio looks like it just has a better sustain with these medevacs, and the Roach count is starting to, starting to dwindle just a bit. With no more banelings to help really clean this up immediately, it could be tough. But more more is coming in from the side, and just the medevacs are just—I think they're just too good here. Yeah, those upgrades and those medevacs just made it a little bit too much here. Suppy realized that he was falling behind his supply. He's probably going to lose his fourth base, so he GG'd out, and we're heading on into the third game. Really good play from Daishi. Really yep. cool. Nice defense, and Suppy, he just kind of got himself stuck in the. Uh, he just really wanted to attack with roaches and banelings again. Felt he couldn't take a straight up game potentially, but. Well, I, it was just really... He put himself in a tough situation with his with his choices in that game, I think. Yeah, exactly. It really was just a difficult spot for Suppy to be in, for sure. All right, so that was game number two. So Daishi takes it, evens up the series. We'll be heading to, towards game number three here in just a few moments, so stay tuned.